So one of the things we're doing right now is we're um, we're looking at training everybody up for stealth bombers and doing uh, hot drops. Um, that ship that I showed you a while back, the one called a Sin, it's a Tech II, um, what we call a Black Ops battleship. And what it can do is it can create a portal. So you're sitting next to the ship, and I'd open up a portal to somebody who's sinoing at another side, at the other <clears> side. <throat> so say several light years away in other systems, yep. several jumps away, and everyone could jump from there straight to the the target uh, location. So we we do what's called hunter seeking. So you have one guy who kind of goofs around somewhere and then gets some of the local people to try to make a run at him. And then when he does, what he does is. Uh, as soon as they engage, he uh, lights off the sino, and we all jump in and back him up. And uh, it's called a hot drop. I don't know if I've explained this before. But yep. This is uh, yep. this is what we're hoping to be able to do with with everybody. If we get a good group together, it's a it's a real it's a lot of fun. Oh, that'd be pretty cool. I think that'd be awesome. If you're looking for uh, if you were looking for salvage, there, Jolt Effect. I'm just running over to another uh, another. Space, another station here to drop this little, I don't know, I guess this Kaldari uh, shuttle over. I'm going to be shuttling, or pardon me, salvaging on my, man, I can't talk today. I'll be salvaging on my other tune. So I just want to drop this guy off. So that's what you're watching right now. Okay. Well, that was loud. What's that? <laughs> the uh, exhale. <laughs> it's been a long day. I hear you. I hear you. You uh, do you play Eve Jolt? Are you looking for someone to do some salvaging, or you want to see some PvP, or you want to see some missions, or actually I don't do too much PvP. I could run some missions or whatever. And while you're in channel too, if you've got any questions, um, we've got in channel here with us Marcus Dredlin, long time player. Not much in the EVE university doesn't know, so if you got questions, throw them out there. I'll uh, I'll forward them to him, and I'm sure he can hook you up. Cool. You don't mind that, do you? Not at all. No. So fire away, Jolt. You got any questions about just about anything? Now's your chance. There was a huge battle in Head GP last night between um, elements of Brave and uh, Pandemic Legion and their allies. Um, really? Yeah, thousands, thousands of ships destroyed. Literally, um, really, uh, really wild battle. Oh, that's I was, pretty cool. Uh, taking the opportunity to take a look at the at the killboards afterwards to check out how they've been fitting their ships for fleet combat. Some of these big groups, you know, kind of cool. Yeah, that one I watched on on YouTube the other day was pretty cool, but man, it was hard to even see anything. You couldn't even really see anything. The whole whole sky was just lasers, and then it was lagging out. <laughs> yeah, when they get that many people, they do what's called TD time dilation, so the server slows everything down. Um, so actually, um, you can get down to where it's several seconds per one second, and uh, then it gets a little hairy to try to control things, but... Uh, it's the only way the server can handle the all the calculations, you know. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's pretty interesting stuff. A lot of those battles, it just, when it becomes a lag fest, it's kind of a bummer because you're you're just not really. Uh, it's not. I always really enjoyed small gang warfare, where you were just kind of going, you know, um, kind of one to one. Or 
not even one to one, you know, like ten guys fighting ten guys or whatever. We used to do that a lot in Providence, roaming around and little defense fleets and stuff. That was that was a gas. Whether you won or you lost, it was it was a hoot. When you get into those battles where there's two or three thousand people, it is kind of cool. Like it's exciting and stuff. But one second you're you're kind of clicking something and you're thinking, man, what's going on? Because nothing's moving. And then the next second, boom, you're in your pod. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that what life is like in in Pro- Providence? Is null set correct? Providence is null sec. Yeah, it's um, it's what we call not red, don't shoot space. So, the people that live out there, CVA, who Tim doesn't like very much, um, <laughs> they uh, they basically sponsor this sort of environment where everyone is welcome in the space as long as you don't cause trouble. So you can go out there and enjoy the space uh, and experiment with null sec and learn how to live in null, null sec and survive. So it's sort of a springboard. That's a PvP environment where a lot of people are doing a lot of PvP. Uh, it's sort of newbie nullsec, you know. And uh, yeah, it's fun. I, I'd like to take you and uh, some other uh, newer pilots out there sometime soon, and uh, we can just check it out. Yeah, I think that'd be really awesome. I have a lot of friends who still live out there in the different alliances that own uh, that space, so uh, they should be able to maybe hook us up with a little tour. Maybe we'll check out some space stations or something. I think that'd be awesome, yeah. I'd love to do that. I'll have to talk to one of my buddies who's with Volta. He hasn't been online in a while, but... Ah, Tim's online. All right, let's see if we got any contracts here for Salvage while we're having this discussion. That's what we're scheduled to do on uh, EVE. Actually, I should make sure we're not war decked so I don't step outside and get blown to Kingdom Come first. Probably be a good idea. Oh, all ang easy. So I'm going to actually sign on online. And then we're going to start running some salvage missions here. Now this is my alt salvager, so my main salvager, which I was just on, has got better skills. Um, I would prefer to be using him. I use salvage drones with him. I'll use MTUs, which are mobile tracking units. I can grab... Uh, well, you can drop one every 5,000 kilometers, so you can be pulling in ships and wrecks from, you know, quite a distance. I think they'll do about 96 kilometers away, you know, and I'm pulling from about the same. So, and the nice thing about an MTU is that uh, you don't have to right-click uh, cargo list. Hey, welcome to the, who is Priest? Varchki, welcome to the stream. Um, just signing, just signing into my salvager here to do some missions. It's explaining this is my salvager alt. Typically, I would use drones and MTUs. My main is is down in Amar and Palas, and unfortunately, there's no mission runners running right now, so I can't salvage for them. But I work oh, for. There's no uh, no mission runners in Palace right now. Well, there are, but not that are hooked up with me for contracts. Uh, I I run for Pro Syn Pro Synergy, which in game is a pretty big salvagers. I think there's about 900 uh, on the corp list, and they run in about <coughs> eight or nine different uh, locations. So it's pretty good. Um, but none of the guys I run for out there. That's really loud there. If we could cut that off on the stream, that'd be good. Oops, sorry. Is that me? Yep. Sorry. No problem. Um, I usually run for those guys out there, but they're not online. So I am working out of Langeezy right now, and I'm going to grab a couple of... Uh, I've been playing for about a year or so. Do you play? Oh, welcome to the... I didn't even notice you just came in. Do you run salvage? Do you play? I mean, I'm, I'm also open to uh, anybody offering tips, suggestions, for sure. But I'm going to go pick up a couple of contracts here and just uh, sign in here. Oh, you sent one of the tunes back to Langeezy. No, I've always had an alt in Langeezy. Uh, this oh, okay. was this was my in corp character. My other character was my out of corp. In case we got war decked, I could I could contract my bookmarks that I got through corp to my alt, right? Oh yeah, you'll yeah. It's it's one of those games you could definitely play on and off, on and off. You can get a passion for it. Yeah, Nico's a good guy. Yeah. I love working for uh, for Pro Synergy. It's good money, especially if you want you want to start running some PvP later. That's expensive. And just for you guys who just came in the game, if you uh, if you do want to know something, you, something in the game that you're interested in, whether it's PvP, null sec, low sec, ships, fittings, 
Um, ask, we got Marcus Stredlin in uh, in with us today. He's been a long time player. Not much he doesn't know, so um, fire away. Hi, everybody. What do you think about missiles, Marcus? Uh, one of the one of our viewers said missiles are bad. Well, he, someone told him missiles are not a good choice. He thinks missiles are are pretty awesome. So, what do you think? Well, I mean, obviously, you know, all the weapons platforms in Eve are, have their advantages and disadvantages. You know, um, I personally like missiles. I think missiles are are really good, particularly uh, very useful if you're going to do a lot of missioning. And really good in, in PvP, too, for that matter. Um, you just have to set up your ship properly. Um, some people will prefer guns because, you know, they picked a Galenti character, and so they're trained for guns. They know guns, you know. So uh, it's always good to check out, you know, I guess it, what you want to do is adapt your ship for whatever you're planning on doing, I guess, primarily. Uh, so we got one says I I have a 90 uh, told to fix says I have a 98M pilot and I have no idea what I'm doing either been away from the game a few years and completely feel like a noob. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah, I just recently got back to Eve myself after about a year and a half away. So uh, my I have two tunes at 100 mil skill points and yeah, there's a lot of, of relearning and, and there's new stuff all the time. That's one of the things that's been getting me is they've added a bunch of new ships, a new com bunch of new components. Um, different ways of doing things. So yeah, Eve is like a constant. You have to constantly <clears throat> study Eve, almost, you know, to to keep on top of it. No kidding, eh? Well, I'm pretty new to the game. Like I say, only maybe a year, and that's a little bit spotty off and on. And I am just overwhelmed by the amount of stuff that you can do in this game. And and actually, I guess part and parcel. That's probably why I do a lot of salvage. Not only can you make some good money, like some salvages are only making. Let's say they're making 10 mil a, 10 mil a isk a week, which isn't very much. Um, some guys are making over a bill a week salvaging. Not a whole lot of them, but a few of them are. Um, of course, they're going at it almost full time, but you can make a lot of money. So if you do want to PvP in the future, you do want to, you know, you want to be down and messing around, ninja mining in Nullsec or, or wormhole setups or whatever you're doing, it's going to cost money because... Chips, as uh, Marcus will tell you, disappear quickly in Nullsec, as you guys know. Yeah, big time. <laughs> we had... We had a... Oh, go ahead. We had a bit of an adventure the other day, actually. A couple of friends who are just kind of getting back into wormholes um, got into a wormhole, and somehow their uh, scanner uh, wasn't wasn't available anymore. Um through various circumstances <laughs> anyway so they had, we had three or four battleships stranded in a in a wormhole at uh, the, the the wormhole that they had for the exit collapsed so then we had to uh, mount a bit of a rescue operation to get them back uh, we we did manage spent, it took me about four or five hours of, of scanning once i finally did find the other exit for the uh, wormhole and got in to scan them a wormhole exit uh, back out so we had a, a bit of an adventure it was uh, for a while there, they were wondering if they're just going to have to, you know, pot express themselves out, but um, managed to, to get everybody out eventually. <laughs> what we seen? Uh, who was that? One of our guildies was just auto traveling through high sec space, and he was getting jumped the other day. You know, remember who was that? Tall guy? Tall guy got potted, just coming out of his home base. <laughs> Autopiling it down to Mar to join the rest of us. So it just goes to show you, man, you're never safe in Eve. <laughs> You think you're safe? Uh, that's for sure. You you know, there's just lots of people not. who are very good at figuring out ways to get around the the game mechanics and, uh, and and destroy you where you think you're safe in Empire. So you have to be cautious at all times. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point about the interface. Uh, my soup was saying he loves the inter interface. He thinks it would be a good social network interface. I I personally love the interface too. I think it's it's incredible. There has been a lot of comments about the UI being confusing in this game, hard for new players to understand, and in general, overwhelming. What do you guys think of that? I think there's definitely room for improvement, um, but I've seen a lot of improvements too over the eight years or so that I've been playing the game, so I don't know. It's, uh, it's, 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 you know, it's a work in progress. I don't, sometimes I wonder what CCP's direction is. You know, it seems, of course, it, the game is so huge that there's so many different categories and areas in which to 
you know, make modifications and improvements that it probably is a little overwhelming for them. Um, I'd like to see them finally complete walk, walking in stations. And uh, mm. but you know, there's a new there's a there's a UI improvement that's on the in the books right now. It's uh, you can read up on it on uh, Eve News 24 or the Matani dot com. Uh, or on the Eve website, uh, they're talking about changing the ship fitting screen. And uh, really? Eve News 24 had an yeah, Eve News 24 had an interesting article about how they'd like to maybe see some improvements, um, maybe completely do away with the ship fitting screen and go to a, a new view where you'd actually just be looking at your ship in the hangar and rotate it, and you could drag and drop fittings onto it like that or something. I don't know. Interesting so idea. here is a classic example, and I'm actually glad that you guys are watching because if you do, if you are interested in getting a salvage, and you uh, you want to make some money that way, here is the most frustrating thing that you will ever find. You think it would be ninja? You think it would be gankers? No, it's yellow Rex. So you've uh, you've accepted a contract from some mission runner, and you go out uh, in the middle of uh, you know God knows where, and the and the wrecks aren't abandoned. It drives me crazy. <laughs> So now I gotta ask him to fly back out here and abandon the wrecks while I sit here and wait and hope not get killed. Because people like the guys that Marcus are flying in are probably lining me up as we speak. Because <laughs> I watch their channel and I'll tell you, it is terrifying. It's terrifying. Well, we do a little bit of Empire ganking at times. <clears throat> you know, mm -hmm. Miners don't like us very much. But we used to be miners, so we kind of know what miners are like and we're just experimenting. You know, you have to constantly push the envelope. He's uh, Joel Defect saying he used to have a POS in high sec, which he used for industry, but uh, he took a break. It's all been destroyed. They pretty much left him with a tower and a laser tower. Is it worth setting back up and playing as a solo indie pilot? Well, you know, the thing about Empire pauses is, you know, typically what you're doing with them is research and, and, and blueprint copying. Um, it seems like, you know, I read an article the other day um, by a, a Goon Swarm member, and he said that, uh, you know, basically you're spending 100 million ISK a month on fuel to make 101 million ISK on, on blueprints, you know. So <laughs> I've experienced that too. I, I used to have a, a personal uh, low sec pos mining uh, Moongoo, and, um, and, you know, I think I turned over probably 100 mil a month for a, a tremendous amount of trouble, you know. So. Uh, even in that kind of a situation, uh, posses are. I, I think maybe the game mechanic for posses needs to be changed a little bit. I think that they're uh, they've become a, a lot of hassle. You know, is, is my feeling on them right now. I mean, well, to give you an idea, I have I think five different posses, um, three Death Star setups, a medium faction and a small faction, all fully fitted, and they're just sitting in various hangars across New Eden right now. Whether or not to sell them is my next question. So this drives me a little bit crazy, so I'm going to have to move on from this window. He's obviously, I don't know, if you know much about salvaging, what happens is the mission runners, these guys are running out here. <clears throat> okay, so this second room is good, so that's good. So these mission runners, they're running out here, and what they're going to do is uh, shoot down their wrecks, make a big mess, and bookmark that particular spot in space. Once they've done that, then they can come back and they can contract uh, those bookmarks to Pro Synergy. Of course, us salvagers with Pro Synergy pick them up. Off we go, and uh, pick them up. It's a pretty good gig. These guys, they're running missions. They're not typically stopping to salvage. I don't know if they carry a salvage array on them or a tractor beam. It's probably unnecessary, and uh, you know they'd rather just keep crunching out missions. And so they're making. These guys are making 50 to you know 100 mil, uh, maybe even a couple hundred mil a week uh, for doing nothing. Well, I've never salvaged and talk a whole lot. It's hard to do. <laughs> you know, and I think that's the big draw for Pro Synergy is that, uh, you know, the guy's built a great corporation out of a great idea. Uh, save you time, make money for doing nothing, basically. I've always kind of wanted to get into planetary interaction, just kind of reading up on it, but it seems like an in insane amount of kind of investment and time, and it really does, to me, it feels like it's a real game changer as far as your whole approach to EVE. What do you think about that, Marcus? 
Oh, you hear an echo? Oh, no, no, sorry. How's that? Is that gone? Sorry about that, guys. Let me know if that's better, Darkstar. Sorry, I stepped away from the, from the uh, computer for a second there. Well, that's okay. I'm just trying to... Like, <clears throat> the boys were hearing an echo. I'm just trying to... Yeah, okay, that is good. Yeah, good. What I was just asking you there, what you thought about planetary interaction as far as, you know, going about it in this game. It, it just seemed to me like to be a completely different approach to the game of EVE altogether. Yeah, I think the echo went away. It was my iPad. I actually used my iPad as a second monitor, right, so I can read chat. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. I had the volume up. <laughs> Multiple monitors is very useful. Multiple miners. Multiple monitors, sorry. Oh, monitors, oh, okay. Hey, multiple yeah, miners is Eve. useful, too. <laughs> yeah, multiple, miners. multiple monitors leads to multiple miners, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he works. So true. So you're salvaging right now? Yeah. Are you, uh, you're in stream, aren't you? Yeah, I'm watching it. So basically, here, I'll zoom out. You Eat can see lunch, I'm pulling in all these wrecks from all over around me. Now, again, as I mentioned, this is my, my salvaging alt. So normally what I'd be doing is I would be deploying an MTU, which is a mobile tracking unit. It would also be pulling them in. I run with about four or five... Uh, uh, four or five drones, which will also do salvaging for me. So they don't tractor, but they will salvage. So... It, it's way faster, but I I have to get the skills up on this. I never used to have any skills. This was just my my uh, character that would sit in station because in Eve they can declare a war on you. If they declare a war on you, they have the right to kill you on sight, and there's not you don't get kill rates on them. Concord, which is the Eve police, doesn't come to defend you. You just die. So <laughs> uh, you can't leave. You can't leave base. It really hampers you, especially when you're in industry and you need to go out and complete your missions. You're losing contracts. So it's, if you're if you're not doing that, you can get declared war. Is that what you're saying? Uh, you can't leave. What I'm saying is that if if I'm in court, if they declare war on Pro Synergy and I'm outside of station with a Pro Synergy uh, character, it'll it'll say, oh, okay, you know, basically free rights to kill this guy. And so I can't do that. So what we would do is we would leave one character in corporation, create an alt that was out of corporation. And oh, then it, gotcha, gotcha. Right. So we'd pick up a contract with our out of corp guy, uh, in corp guy, and then uh, once we got the bookmarks to those regions of space that we need to go do the work, we would contract it to ourselves, to our alt. That guy, he's not in pro synergy, so he could leave the station right past all the guys waiting outside the door to kill you, uh, basically laugh and wave at him as you go by and go to your work because they can't get you. Well, they could, but they're going to die for it if they can figure out who you were. What we discovered over years of playing with war deck um, mechanics is that your best bet uh, if you want to avoid being war decked, is to war deck others. Uh, good offense is the best defense, kind of thing. So we, that's what we do. We we, we war deck other people, and it, and it almost becomes like you're part of a club now. Uh, you won't get you won't get war decked anymore, especially if you have a good kill board. Yeah. Hey, welcome uh, Welsh King Fire Orb uh, to the stream. Doing some Eve salvaging right now. Feel free to drop us a line, questions, comments. I am on my alt. Yes, I normally would be doing this with drones uh, and MTUs. I would love to be doing that right now. But uh, again, I am on my alt because my main is in a space with no work right now because no one's online. A lot of the guys are from UK or and they're just not playing right now. But why is nobody following? Because this is the first time I've streamed EVE salvaging. So um, you can check us out on this channel, though, at... Uh, twitch.tv slash serenity.com and basically we stream Monday nights, Sunday nights, that's our regular raid, so we do new content, you'll see 8-man new content raids, it's a, a lot of fun um, you'll see a lot of uh, heroes on here uh, Heroes of the Storm that is League of Legends, you'll even see some Hearthstone streaming, so yeah, follow us check us out, if you go to down below the channel there you'll see all the scheduled broadcasts and 
uh, different personalities of guys that you can meet and whatever. The Star Wars raids is the most entertaining. The Star Wars raids are entertaining. You gotta check out some of our YouTube vids on those <laughs> things, man. <laughs> Someone comes into channel the other day. Check out one of the. If you, could, I wish I had the link, but uh, someone comes into channel the other day and starts blasting. Uh, what was that? Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston. <laughs> as we're pulling a boss, nothing like pulling a boss to to Whitney Houston, man. Hilarious. But anyway, for those of you who just joined, uh, if you got any questions about anything in the game, fire it away. We've got a pretty pretty knowledgeable guy in channel with us today, Marcus Dredlin, been playing for a long time. Um, and we got a, a couple other guildies here from Swotor, League of Legends, uh, you know, Darkstar, and uh, Major Dragoon are in guilds. So you got questions on any of those games at all either? Uh, those guys know pretty much uh, back to front of them. So, yeah, we're social. Chat it up. Is that the link? Darkstar, that's the one for the vid? Yeah. Yeah, okay, check that out, guys. You're going to love that. That's hilarious. I still laugh when I watch that, just as hard as I laughed the first time. I'm fond of the door bosses. Yeah. Yeah, door bosses are pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. I wish I could get some more uh, salvage arrays on here, but I don't want to drop. I used to run four and four, but I like pulling in a little faster than I like uh, salvaging them. Get them close anyway, and then work from there. That's how I do it. Now you run five three, eh? Yeah, I do run five three. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I always ran four four. I don't know why. It's how we started out with you know. A long time ago, and Eve, they, there wasn't one of these ships that's designed for for salvage. So the best you could do for salvaging typically was a was a catalyst destroyer or something like that. And uh, we always just ran them four four. But well, I can see the advantages of running five five. Yeah, well, uh, to be, five five three. Well, to be honest, Jerry, in my cat started without me. In my uh, in my cat destroyer, I do run four four, which is which is funny that you mentioned that. So and I always did. Uh, I think. Um, I think with a with a catalyst, when you're only able to run eight, then four four is actually pretty good balance of of um, closing the gap to actually getting the salvaging done. But when it, when it came to being able to run, you know, nine, well, suddenly you have to decide, okay, what do you want to be salvaging faster? Do you want to be closing the distance faster and bringing these wrecks to you? And I just, for me, I think the extra tractor beam was was better. But I would run four four with the, with my catalyst for sure. And makes sense. Are you running Tech 2 salvagers? Oh yeah, all Tech 2. Except for on this, again, so this is my alt. So he's all he's all Tech 1 for another day and 10 hours, and then I can finally switch over to all Tech 2 and then start putting my drone skills up. Uh, but on my main, I'm all, yeah, I'm all Tech 2 across the board on everything. Gotcha. Which is the only way to go. Yeah, Tech 2 is a lot better. Uh, um, faster, particularly to do a little bit of ninja salvaging at times. You can go out into low sec with a, with a cloaky ship, and uh, and especially when there's been kind of a running battle here or there, you can get um, you know really good salvage from from uh, ships that have been killed in PvP. And uh, of course, you want a T2 salvager for that because your T1 salvager is going to take all month long uh, to salvage some of these ships. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Somebody's going to come along and kill you. Oh yeah, and the, as it is too with it. And correct me if I'm wrong, Marcus, but with the T2 salvagers, your chance of getting higher quality of salvage is, is increased, is it not? I think so. Um, there's probably some there's probably some uh, game mechanic master who would know the math on that, but uh, I believe uh, I believe that is the case. I know that uh, trying to salvage like a Tech 2 wreck, uh, uh, or you know even faction spawn with with a T1 salvager, is is kind of a no go. Mm -hmm. If any of you guys that are watching stream are mission runners, basically how this works with Pro Synergy, I'm going to shamelessly plug this corporation for a second, uh, is you run out, you do your missions, as I mentioned, you bookmark your rec sites and you contract them free of charge to Pro Synergy at whatever particular out outpost you happen to be, your space station. Make sure that Pro Synergy has an office there, otherwise, you know, or will at least service that office, uh, or you're wasting your time. 
and uh, they're going to assign it to one of their salvagers that have access to corp contracts. They're going to get in there, grab it, do it. And I believe uh, you get paid 50% of the haul, the salvager gets 40 and the corporation snags 10 for themselves. So you know, you're making some pretty good money for doing nothing. So if you, you know, now this, these rooms aren't too big, but you can see right there on the screen, I'm at 3 million, 310, well, 3 and a half million of should be value, estimated value for ISK. Um, so what we'll do, and, and sometimes you'll get up into the 30s, depending on if they're running L4s or whatever they're running, but uh, we always round down. That way uh, it compensates for when we're not getting enough money back. So these are estimations, right? But depending on what station we're at, what the value is, I don't think we're not, we don't haul it all over, you know, the cosmos to get the best price. So they just kind of sell it and that makes a difference up. So we'll round down. So if it's, let's say Salvador did 100, 100 points for you, right? So that would be 100 million worth of estimated value of salvage. Then you're going to get half of that. So you're going to get 50 million for doing nothing, for ignoring your wrecks and letting us do your work. So that's kind of how it works, um, and we've got regulars. Actually, we've got so many we can't even keep up. So we're, if you're also interested in salvaging and you're in game and you're new to the game and you want to meet some guys, just like uh, was mentioned earlier by I think it was Joel Defect that mentioned he knew Nico, um, and there's a ton of other great guys, uh, Katima, Brent Lee, uh, you know, just a ton of great salvagers. But they'll get you hooked up. You can check out the Pro Synergy website. There's recruitment. Uh, conditions there and what you need to do how to go about it who to contact so if you're interested in doing some salvaging it's not going to be your thing for the for the entire time you're in eve everybody knows that everyone's going to move on from salvaging eventually but eve takes money and to get into any of the real good game stuff uh, you have to have some misc and it's so just like real life you're going to have to work for some misc before you can really afford to be able to do a lot of that stuff unless you get in with a Daddy Warbucks uh, Corp that's going to dump gads and gads of money on you. So hey, I'm going to plug Marcus. He just won a... What did you win? You just won something? Y are you there? Eve Fan Fiction, I believe it was. Eve Fan Fiction Contest. Two and a half billion is he won for writing a bunch of backstories for some stuff, I believe. But it would seem that he's muted or not around right now. He just won it right now. He just won it, yeah. So uh, there is a posted 2. blog. Two point one billion. Isk, yeah, not money, like <laughs> in-game money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, just, yeah. <laughs> Did you imagine? <laughs> is that you, Marcus? That's crazy. Yeah, is it? Isn't that cool? So he, uh, I've, I don't know if he even told me what he was writing the fan fiction about, but pretty cool that they offered that. Everyone's got biographies. Like you can, if you're into, into fan fiction, you can write your own biography. Like I got a biography right here, and oh, well, not on this character. I guess on my other one I do. And you know, <laughs> I got into some pretty good detail about their parents and how they died and blah blah blah. You read if you go through Eve and start just reading people's biographies. Just some of the guys out there. I mean, I, I would read a book if they wrote it. Mark is one of them. So yeah, he won some fan fiction. It was great. And that was second place. That wasn't even... I guess he didn't even win. That was second place that he won, and they still paid him that much money. Okay, I'm off to room three, and hopefully we can get the uh, mission runner to go back and unlock that room, but I'll have to contract it back to them. That's what they want me to do with this. Pro Synergy's got a couple of channels, P Sync and Pro G Pro Synergy. It's kind of nice. It's like just for Corp Channel. You can ask the brass <laughs> any questions that you have, or you're not sure what to do on a certain mission, or or uh, whatever. Then you can. They're always they're always great about reaching out to you and making sure that you know what you're doing. Oh, literally three wrecks in this room. Three wrecks. That was worth coming. So he's not going to get a huge haul. Where are we at? Four and a half million esque. So it's going to be a four pointer. That's incredibly small. Some of the good ones I've done 32, 35. I've never seen anything above 35. Not unless they were jamming kind of two of their missions together and they just bookmark them all together and send us out at one time. I've seen that. 
get up to 70, but not organically on one mission. Blue Devil, Red Devil, welcome to the channel, man. Doing a little bit of salvaging today. Talking about EVE, everything about EVE. Um, got some other guildies in here. Talking about League of Legends, SWOTOR. You got any questions about anything, fire away. You want to teach us something, fire away. Check out uh, below our stream. You'll check out all of our broadcasts on the different games. You'll see a lot of League, uh, Heroes of the Storm, SWOTOR raids. They're very funny. There's a link up above. Darkstar Rider posted to a great... A great vid. Uh, watch that. Uh, it was that was a good night. We have regular raids on Pot Five and Swotor. All right, just about ready to get back to base and yell at a mission runner. Oh, they want me to fleet up. Let's see if I can contact the guy and fleet up with him. All right. I gotta get him to fly out here and abandon these wrecks. Oh, well, that's cool. Well, what you should do is check back in here one time when we're running some PvP missions or some, uh, oh, some PvP or dipping down in Nullsec or we do some mining sometimes. What I'm doing today is just salvage. It's a it's a really cool game, but it's a it's a sandbox game. So literally, if you can you can dream it up, you can do it. There's a lot of ways to make money. What do you YouTube? You got a show on there? I love hearing that stuff. I don't know if I want to meet this mission runner out to abandon them. He's wanted. <laughs> they come shoot me down. So that's it in a nutshell as far as salvaging goes. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to train up my drone skills on this alt. It's a lot faster when I can get them out. That's for sure. How's your game going over in League? I'm not playing. Jared is. Oh, he started without you? Yeah, a little punk. What a guy. I was waiting in, <laughs> was waiting in League and then he was I in didn't game. I didn't know he was even in. <laughs> Serenity for life! He was in game, so I was waiting and then all of a sudden I checked back and it's like, in game, one minute. I'm like, you punk. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Hey, who do we got here? So now Welcome, Solo448. Still Garen. Welcome to the uh, stream, guys. I want to know what this YouTuber guy does. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm a huge YouTube fan. I watched like 88,000 views right now, I think I have. Yeah, let us know what you do. Blue Devil, Red Devil. What do you do on YouTube? We'll, we'll, we'll check you out, man. Absolutely. Check this out. I have viewed 90,124 videos on YouTube. Oh, man. That, I that's crazy. YouTube addict. <laughs> <laughs> this is your chance, Blue Devil. This is your chance, man. Get him, get, get him hooked on you. <laughs> like, uh, I do uh, craft puppets out of those brown lunch bags on YouTube. I oh, forget it. <laughs> you probably watch that. There's so much stuff, dude. 
somebody just introduced me to like a little comedy thing I've never seen before and they have like 10 million views every video. I was like, sweet. Oh, wait a minute. My kid watches you. Now that I think about it, I knew I knew that name from somewhere, but I couldn't figure out where. My son, Troy, he's a Minecraft, like, nut. I don't, which is funny. I don't get it, which is, you know, ironic because I'm playing a sandbox game, but to me, just the, <laughs> the blocks. Yeah, well, I know I've seen your name, so he's probably checked out one of your vids. But he, he's played for a long time. He's a young guy, though, but he, I can't believe how fast they picked that stuff up. You do scrap metal in real life? <laughs> That's awesome. I just missed that. Do you do it in the Noctis? That's even better. Flying around in space, hauling scrap. <laughs> so, what you do for a living, I'm actually sitting down to do recreationally to relax. Isn't that just like your mind right now? <laughs> I wish I could say I did YouTube for a living, then I, we'd have this connection. That. Oh no, kidding, right? That's what—that's the dream. Did you? I had, yeah, I had a couple hundred followers. I posted a lot of dumb crap, and then I gave up. Well, that video has sixty-six thousand views, but that's about it. Yeah, I got a video. It's got. Uh, we were posting music for a long time, but it's it's tough because the competition is steep. You know, there's yeah. always there's always other people out there gonna be posting stuff too, right? Yeah. I wish I kind of stuck with it because I started back in '06, so oh yeah, end of '06. So it was like YouTube just came out, and I probably could have get got in on a lot more, you know, because it hit the fan about '08. But that's pretty much when I stopped YouTubing, <laughs> and now I just have dumb videos, home videos up on there. No man, I think that's awesome. You were doing some ninja salvaging in low sec. Good for you. I got nothing but respect for that. I know people, especially with pros energy, they're salvagers. They hate ninja salvagers. I mean, I don't want you to take my Rex, but I, <laughs> but I, I think it's pretty cool that you're even staying alive. What are you running in an Octus? Do you carry weapons at all, or do you have? Uh, are you double boxing and protecting yourself? Because I, I thought about getting into that, but I, I get to warp gates to low sec, and I stare at them for about an hour before I finally chicken out and I go back because I'm just like, nah. I don't know. <laughs> so, oh, you were in a vigil. I don't even think I've ever seen a vigil. I'm going to check that out right now. Hmm. Vigil. There it is. <coughs> really? Let's have a look at this. Bonus to target painting. Uh, da, da. Long range scout electronic war. You were using that for salvage? Oh, you made 10 mil. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, well, if you're making 10 mil, that's that's really <laughs> that's not that great of a of a return for the risk you're taking. How much does that ship cost? I didn't even have a look there. Uh, oh, it's only it's only 325,000. Yeah, you did all right. <laughs> so if you're gonna spend 325,000, as long as you're not getting potted all the time. I f I play Farm Sim 2013 as well. I think that's a great game. I don't play it a whole lot anymore, but I do play it. Now my brother, uh, Fate Fontaine and Eve, he does ninja mining in null sec and in wormholes. Now he gets potted probably I don't know, ten times a week when he's actually when he's actually doing it. Uh, but he in about six days turns around about a billion and a half ninja mining. He keeps getting wrecked. He just keeps going back. By, he by he figures about four hundred and how, it, how much did he pay for that? So an Octus is worth about, well not an Octus, pardon me, a Retriever is worth about 26 mil. By the time he finishes checking it all out, 
then he, uh, I think he's probably got maybe 45 mil in there, tops. And he's going out there and farming. So he does a, a ninja, ninja salvaging. He does all right. That's pretty loud there, whoever that is. Sorry, uh, it's me. I'm back. My, You're back. I'm just oh, great. I'm the cord to plug my uh, headset in. The battery's dying. Oh, you stream as well? You stream Eve? Eve? That's cool. What's your stream called? Pin it. Pin it in the chat here and I'll save it. I take this double bookmark mission here. Boom, ba boom. Cool, thanks, man. Just watching your overview, uh, Phoenix. Um, it's one thing that I noticed that that you don't do that we always do, and and the, what, the reason we do it is. <laughs> I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna tell we me I should be D scan, right? Well, no, no, that, that's good to do too. Uh, typically in Empire, I don't bother with descanning, but you should pull your local window up and uh, have it visible on the screen at all times. Oh yeah, okay. Well, when I get back out there, you know, show me how to do that again. Uh, okay. I got my bookmarks here. Uh, for those of you who are just new to channel, here we got Marcus Dreadlin in with us, long time player of Eve, uh, PVPers, lived in Nullsack, lived in Lowsack. He has uh, commanded his own uh, fleets of a hundred ships. Some of those big battles that you see on YouTube or the ones that made huge news, uh, two and three thousand ships. This guy was in them. So if you have a question about Eve and you want an answer, now is your time. Say hi, Marcus. Hey everybody. What, what yeah, well, the reason the reason that you keep local up is that you you want to watch for spikes because if you're going to be ganked, um, typically what you need to do is identify who the gankers are in your area. If you're living in Empire, you want to set them all orange, and so then if you see a, an orange spike in local when you're working, you know you're salvaging, you're mishing, you're mining, uh, then you you maybe know to be cautious. You maybe you know keep an eye out and uh, and warp out. Uh, there's also other things that can do that can kind of tip you off that, you know, somebody's about to come in and, and try to kill you. And <laughs> <laughs> in, 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 now in, in wormhole space, of course, local doesn't uh, doesn't function, so um, it's not as important. But in, in nullsec, it's critical because whatever you're doing in nullsec, you know, typically if you're just doing you know PV activities in order to raise isk. Uh, you need to know what's going on, so you keep two channels open at all times. One is your local Intel channel, the other is your local channel, so you can watch, um, you know, what's going on in your system. Right on. Hey, welcome, Wild Tony. Just doing some salvaging. Hey, uh, Jedi Monkey, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. I'm doing some alt salvaging, so I am on my alt uh, doing some kind of. Uh, salvage missions for Pro Synergy. You're gonna see how how it kind of works. I'm not using MTUs and drones today, again because I am on my alt. I would love to. If you have questions about MTUs or drones, go ahead and ask. Questions about anything else about Eve? Fire away too. So anyway, I'm in space. So where's my local window? You there, Marcus? I think he's going back and forth between live and watching the stream and getting confused. <laughs> that's, that's what's probably happening here. What about the local chat channel? Oh, you're telling me. Okay, you're showing me. All right. Okay, I'm listening. Under my avatar, eh? Sorry, I oh, there you are. You're back, I right? I, had, I think I was muted. I think you were Sorry. muted. I think you were muted. <laughs> Just before bottom, we before we get uh, into that, to answer your question yeah. about that, yeah, fifteen dollars a month user, you can use Plex, but Plex is pretty pricey. What does Plex run in these days? Yeah, Plex is running around eight hundred fifty million isk right now. <laughs> it's, uh, it's old effect has a good, yeah. It's uh, for a while there, it had spiked up to a billion isk, and then they um, yeah. they they removed a lot of the botters. And, yeah. Uh, Got rid of something called um, IS Boxer. That's now illegal. And as soon as they did that, the plex prices started to drop back down again. Interestingly. Oh, there you go. So there's a wild, wild Oni's been playing since '06. So there's a you uh, okay, you know yeah. a thing Me or too. two. Yeah, there you go. Me too. Yeah, awesome. So what is it, Jedi Monkey? What is it about the game that you didn't really understand, on Eve? Because you got a couple guys in this channel here with with Marcus and Wild that have been playing for a long time. So other people have said the same thing. They didn't understand it. I think that's the biggest problem with Eve is that it's you know it has a, a wicked learning curve. It's just it's just nasty and 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 it's hard to understand 
um, sometimes what's going on, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for all those follows, guys. We uh, Come check us out. We stream uh, Swotor, we stream League, we stream Hearthstone, we stream Heroes. Uh, hey, Epic Tanks, how's it going? That's our fearless leader. You'll see him on uh, quite a bit. But, uh, yeah, I think with Eve, that's, that's, you, you nailed it right on the head. It is a terrifying UI. It's, uh, it's a ton of information at once. And I am guilty, like, and I mean so guilty, of getting into a game and pressing skip tutorial, skip tutorial. For me, as a gamer who's been gaming in whatever, you know, different MMOs and MOBAs and consoles and you name it since I was a young guy, I'm not afraid of learning curve. So, for me, I can look at something and I'll figure it out in Eve. I had to go through the tutorials. <laughs> there was just no way. It was too much going on, and how quickly you'd just, you know, you'd bug out and you'd say, forget it. You can skip the tutorials, but only if you join a really good corporation with experienced members that can really help you out, you know, and uh, kind of just sit there and answer questions all day, you know. And uh, there's, a, there's a fair bit of stick to itiveness that's involved in Eve. It, it's a funny thing. I think that if you get past your first year, um, you're probably in for the duration. <laughs> That's been my experience. Uh, I'd agree with that. <laughs> but if you, uh, you know, I, I, our experience too with, with Red Sun Industries was that we all started EVE. We were all noobs. We just basically came in cold and just tried to figure everything out for ourselves. Um, and after about six months, we quit. And, and it was another six months before we came back to the game, most of our core membership. But after we did that and we started to get a little more organized, um, some of the people that I've been flying with in EVE, I've been flying with them for ever since then, you know, seven, eight years. So uh, it's, a, it's, it's that kind of game. So you're pretty new to gaming in general? Or just, just new to EVE? It seems like you're new to gaming in general is, is what you're saying. Somebody hit that link because I can't do that right now and tell me what that link that Wild Honey just said because I'd love to check that out. Okay, yeah, it's the Eve learning curve uh, picture. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty, pretty. It's pretty funny. Ah, uh, okay, I'm it's, trying it's, it. I'm trying I'll, it. I'll sort of describe it. It's um, there's a bunch of learning curves for other games like World of Warcraft and Lord of the Rings Online, and then uh, Eve's uh, learning curve is like this. Uh, it goes straight up and then it turns back. It's like a, oh, okay. like a cliff, and then there's all these dead people and like a bulldozer. <laughs> okay, no, 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 I gotta see this. <laughs> Post it and mumble. Link it and mumble. I'll see it from there. I don't want to press my iPad because it's an iPad and okay. it'll blow up or something like that, right? So, <laughs> hold on. Let me see if I can find it. My mumble's on the other computer. I have here, to so see that. I'll just see if I can find it. It's well, pretty funny and it's actually pretty accurate. Um, it, it's it's like it. Well, uh, Jedi Monkey, how familiar are you with the concept, if at all, with the concept of a sandbox game, and what that what that means by nature? Channel CP Tibbertalin link to Sensecane dot files dot WordPress dot com. Well, he makes a good question. He said he heard a bunch of horror stories about guys inviting you to uh, guilds, or to, pardon me, to their corpse or to their alliance, and then you know wrecking you and taking your plex and taking your money. And uh, they have no access to your ISK, do they? Well, no, that's, that's, he makes a good point. Uh, in EVE, scamming is allowed, so people do scam new players. That's why that, it's kind of a challenge for the new player base, I think. Um, it's, it's not particularly new player friendly. There are some groups that are more new player friendly. Like, we always were very new player friendly in Red Sun Industries. Um, but but some groups just aren't, and so yeah, they'll 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 really um, you know it can be depressing when you get into the game and your first day you, or you finally get a, a new ship and you you make one little mistake and you get blown up, you know. So it's yeah, um, it's one of those things. You kind of have to find the right group to fly with, one that um, you know is both you know pretty friendly and easygoing. Uh, we, we've been in big groups as well, though, where there was huge amounts of drama, uh, oh, a lot yeah. of uh, e-peening, you know, going on. Uh, <laughs> So, well, we know a few you know, things about can... drama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's so true. And on the flip side, though, uh, and we'll, Jedi Monkey, we will address that thing about what was a, what is a sandbox game in just a minute. Um, but uh, yeah, on the flip side, when you do find yourself in a good corporation, for example, I'll reference Fate Fontaine again, my brother. He was a miner. He gets into the game, so I start salvaging. <clears throat> I'm making. You know, I don't know what I was making at the time. Maybe, maybe 50 million a week doing the salvage. Now he gets into a corporation that wormhole mines. They take him out. They've got uh, they've got a setup with different corporations. They're basically going to be their strong arm, their protection. 
they take these guys in, they bring their orcas, which are basically just, uh, you know, hauling ships. You can stuff them with, well, they do a lot more, but you can stuff them with ore and with minerals. And they would take these guys in and make them a killing. Like, so, you know, you're a brand new, you're a brand new player to the game and you're like, oh, what do I do? And all of a sudden now you're sitting on two, three billion worth of money. I mean, that's, you can... So for every horror story, there's some positive ones too about getting into some big corporations. It's like anything else. Ask your questions of these guys. If they don't have a website, it's kind of a... I don't know. What do you think, Marcus? I'm thinking if they don't have a website you can go and visit, that's a red flag right off the bat to me. Well, maybe so. Just having a website, though, isn't necessarily... I mean, you have to kind of get to know people. Uh, and Eve, it's... A big part of Eve is, is, is the relationships part and... Um, uh, you know, it can be just sort of the luck of the draw. When I used to do a lot of recruiting, um, I would just try to stand out a little bit and just say to people, you know, um, if you go into the recruitment channel and Eve, people are just copying and pasting their recruitment message over and over again. And I would actually sit there and live type messages in and I would say to people, you know, if you want to join a copy and paste corporation, sure, go <laughs> with these guys. If you want to join a corporation that's that's uh, you know actually here for you and a little a little bit of a cut above, then maybe look for somebody who's a little more intelligent with their approach. You know. Um, yeah, I agree. It also it, it it comes around to what you want to do in the game too. I mean, if you know if you're interested in industry or if you're interested in, in salvage, then you need to find a group that's doing that. If you're interested in PvP, you need to find a group that's doing that. The, the challenge is you know. Um, uh, if if you're looking at a group that does PvP or, or something like that, um, they may want to PvP with you, you know? <laughs> yeah. So that's a good point you make, actually, Jolt Effect, is that, you know, and I think we've got a few guys in our in our Serenity Guild uh, on Pot 5 in Swotor that feel the same way as you. So he says, look, I'm a mature gamer and I've learned to detach myself from gaming assets. Uh, I could care less whether I win or lose in a game. It's just another form of entertainment for me. So I know that it's difficult for younger players to grasp. His nephew hates it when he pinch a pickaxe from him in Minecraft. <laughs> You're ruthless. That's just cold-hearted, right? But... Uh, Actually, I don't even know what that means. I don't play Minecraft. But we have a few guys that are like, that. win or lose, they don't really care. Uh, they just want to play. If they get gear, it's a bonus. If they're, you know, if they're hitting achievements, it's a bonus. But That's the best way to look at it. I think that uh, Joel Defect is, is right. You know, we have to view it as a game. The, the thing with EVE is that it's it's somehow more personal, partially because of the way the game mechanics work. You know, if you lose a ship, it's gone. You know, it's mm -hmm. not like many of these other games where you died and you just respawned with all your stuff and off you go, you know. Uh, you lose your ship in EVE, it's, you know, it's destroyed. And, and in certain it's, it's, you know, situations, you do feel kind of butthurt. I remember one time we lost a, we lost a jump freighter in Losek due to uh, my cousin making a, you know, kind of a stupid mistake. And I was so mad at him. Like, you know, granted, unfortunately, I live in, in North America. He lives in Europe. And so I couldn't, like, drive over to his house and punch him in the head. But I would have, you know. <laughs> EVE <laughs> Rage. That EVE Rage. That's awesome. <laughs> well, how much was the ship he lost worth? Uh, about 4.5 billion is. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you should... Well, um, these things happen. That's Eve. So we promised to address that sandbox game. So you, you, you want to run down what a sandbox game is? Well, basically, you know, we're, we're talking about a game where um, it's up to you to create your own content. You know, everything is, is wide open. Um, that's what Eve's like. So instead of, you know, when we're used to playing games, you know, when we were kids, we played, you know, maybe you played an old Sierra game. I used to love those. Well, the game's path is completely laid out for you, and you have to figure out how to follow it and, and solve the puzzles. In Eve, you've got all the puzzle solving there because you're trying to figure out the game mechanics, but everything is wide open. You can go anywhere you want, and it's one universe. So whatever you do affects pretty much everybody, theoretically. So, you know, like, there's, there's famous people out there. Um, I don't know if you guys know uh, the guys, uh, Chance Ravine from uh, Wingspan TT, Torpedo Delivery Services. They're, they're hilarious. And, and uh, funny part is, uh, Chance is a nice guy. I, I got the chance to, to chat with him a few times now, and, uh, and and so here, you know, you're flying through space, and you can see this person sitting there and local, you know, and and and, and say hi, and uh, everybody knows who that individual is, you know. Uh, so it's it's unique. It's, it's very unique <laughs> in that aspect. You know? That's a good. Uh, Wild Honey made a good point. He's like, yeah, you're a kid. You're sitting in a sandbox. You play with sand. You do what you want. It's a sandbox game. So you know the the. You know what Marcus said is that's that's the exact term of a game. The layman's <laughs> term of a game is. Uh, get in and play and you know you don't necessarily have missions like you'd think for example a lot of people will equate this game to freelancer and I think 
freelancer, our beloved freelancer, anyone who's a space game enthusiast, uh, loved freelancer. I think. Uh, you Love freelancer. There you go. Freelancer was the bomb. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Great game. I mean, we all skipped school to stay home and play freelancer nonstop. So, uh, well, I didn't. I was already out of school, but I got buddies that were skipping school for that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah, freelancer games like that. It it started to get you the very beginnings of what it meant to be a uh, space sim sandbox game. Yeah, you had missions, and uh, you could run those missions, but you could kind of... It broke away from the wing commander, so to speak, which which really railed you into missions, and you didn't have it any was, choice. Yeah, it was very linear, whereas uh, for the first time we had a, a wing commander-like game with Freelancer that was non-linear. And uh, I think the most rewarding part of Freelancer was if you got out to, you know, the pirate space figure out how to take the wormholes out there and, and started to explore it after mm -hmm. the main storyline was over you know it was it was awesome and that's really kind of like what eve is like um eve has, has similar elements to that but the gameplay is very different and uh, uh there's a lot less storyline uh, it's basically uh you know a matter of like i said going out creating your own content and so once again that's one that's why it's really important to have the right group a group that suits what you want to do in the game and uh and it's relatively active. Yeah. I sometimes I'll equate it to the difference between uh, people who play, for example, let's say you're playing console gaming or or PC gaming, but you're into sports gaming. So you're into NHL 15 or Madden 15 or whatever you're into. There's two kind of players who play that game. There's the guys who just want to get on and play. Okay, so they're going to set up, play now. Maybe they're going to pick their favorite team. Maybe they're going to uh, set up some, some sort of a season, perhaps, and, and play all the games in the season. Then there's guys that get on, and they go to general manager mode. And they could care less about playing hockey. They just want to run it. They want to draft players. They want to because they want to have more of an involving uh, in the game yeah, aspect in the game. And for me, that was the same with Wing Commander. Yeah, I'm flying around. I'm running missions. But man, I so desperately wanted to break off and just fly over there. Like what's over there? <laughs> and freelance kind of gave me the opp freelance gave me the opportunity to do that. And now with this. There really isn't missions like you you would say. There are missions to go on, but they're small, and you run them, and you're done. But you could uh, you can put colonies on planets. You can build uh, industry and infrastructure, and and work on crafting and building ships. You can build space. Well, there's nothing. It's pretty pretty involving. So you choose your your own path, so to speak. It's a choose your adventure game. Yeah, big time. And that's uh, what I love about it. One of the things that really is um, a lot of fun in Eve that that uh, I think everyone should try and 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 we started using, we started trying it from the beginning when 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 these wormholes became available. But um, lately, I think a lot of people have kind of tailed off and doing it. And, and there's a little bit more emphasis now on wormhole living. Is is the wormhole life? You know, um, the other day I was saying earlier we had a bit of an adventure in a wormhole and had to do a little rescue mission to rescue some of my corpies who had uh, inadvertently become trapped in a wormhole. <laughs> and uh, it, it really brought back to me what it was like when we lived in a wormhole. Um, of course, we lived in a wormhole back in 2008 or 2009 uh, for about a year. And uh, it became frustrating after a while just living in there all the time um, because you're basically you're, you're kind of trapped in one system it, to some ex to some extent. But it, but um, it was really cool to um, get into a wormhole and start scanning things down and then jumping through a wormhole into another wormhole and figuring out where that wormhole was and what it's, you know, low sec or, or null sec exits were and uh it, it's it's so fascinating there's there's a lot more lore now that they're building up as well for for wormholes with the new thera wormhole system mm -hmm. i think that's really something that uh, the new players should should pursue you know like it, it's if you can get a ship that's cloaky and has a scan prober learn the scan probing mechanics get out there and and just see what's going on uh i mentioned chance ravine and his uh youtube videos Definitely worth checking out because if you're thinking of doing some wormhole activities and, and how to fit out different types of ships that can survive in a wormhole environment, you should watch his videos. They're they're quite educational. Yeah, I'll check those out. So to answer your question, uh, MTT, I've only been playing for about a year, to be uh, to be honest. And I, I got into industry by way of salvage, working for a corporation called Pro Synergy. Uh, I also hook up here with Marcus Redland occasionally and run some PVE working towards doing some uh, PvP and some hot drop and, and some different things like that, a little bit more advanced. But I'll let you tell them how long you've been playing and what you've been uh, all about. Yeah, okay, well I started playing uh, EVE in late 2006. Um, so I've been playing uh, 
pretty much non-stop since then with a few breaks um but um i'm actually now getting back into the game after about a year and a half i've been back in for about four months and i've taken about a year and a half off when we uh we had a a child so uh kind of one thing about eve it's a it's a very time demanding game and uh <laughs> and so <laughs> it pulls some wife aggro it pulls some wife aggro it, it does you have to uh, <laughs> you have to balance that and uh at the time i didn't think i would be able to so i i dropped everything and uh we're just now kind of in rebuild mode but um in the past you know we 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 just really lived eve it's it's crazy it's it's one of these games where you start playing and you don't play anything else you know yeah, it's tough. You know, because I, I love this game. I also play Swotor and League and Hearthstone. So those are, uh, by the way, you guys should check us out. If you're a Swotor fan, Swotor, that's Star Wars The Old Republic, we do play on uh, Prophecy of the Five. We have a regular rating. We're doing new content. You'll see uh, story mode, uh, usually hard mode and nightmare mode of some of the older content. Um, and we raid Sundays, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. Is that correct, Jared? Yeah, yep. uh, that's correct. Yep, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. Monday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, a ton of funny stuff. So you're not only going to see content, but a bunch of idiots uh, in the channel. So, <laughs> And I speak from, uh, from the utmost of respect because I'm one of them. Two other guys in this channel, uh, Darkstar Rider and, and Majora Dragoon are in that guild. So, But, uh, man, do you wanna, if you want to just have a beer and watch some, um, some new content, and we have, have a, an interesting. We have a very interesting dynamic because we're, <laughs> a lot of us know each other personally. We're we're like a great big huge group of of uh, siblings. Just <laughs> out. we're very abrupt with each other. We tell each other we suck and then laugh and slap each other in the face yeah, pretty, we, pretty often. <laughs> we're, we are we are either a bunch of siblings or we're a ba great big giant Mormon compound in Utah with it, right? A bunch of married people. <laughs> <laughs> and that is not an insult to anybody that might be listening on the stream in any way, shape, or form. I'm just saying. <laughs> As well, uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some Eve PvP on this uh, channel uh, in the in the coming weeks. Uh, once we get a little bit more organized with our uh, PvP group yep. in Eve, uh, I'd like to uh, to start streaming on here uh, and, and stream some of some of our PvP operations. So we're planning on doing uh, some uh, wormhole. PvP and also some uh, Black Ops hot drops and stuff like that. That's what I'm excited for, Black Ops hot drops. So, <laughs> Th those man, they sound they sound great to me. I wish you could see the look on their face. If only everybody had a webcam when <laughs> when 40 ships drop in on top of you and you realize that your, you know your <laughs> your billion dollar ship just went out the window. <laughs> yeah, kind of brutal. Kind of brutal. Yep. Eve is definitely a game where you you do one to others before they do to you. <laughs> uh, it's not a good Samaritan game. No. Well, you know, I, I've, it's funny. It's funny the different mindsets too. You know, because I started out playing Eve definitely as sort of a sort of a good Samaritan type player, and uh, over time you change. You know, and, and now what we do is we do Empire ganks. We do, you know, uh, all kinds of mean stuff. Uh, <laughs> just the nature of the game. It, it trains you to be that way, I guess. Uh, salvaging, so we got a question about how much ISK I make salvaging. You can make a ton of ISK salvaging. So personally, I I only salvage on a part-time basis because, of course, you know, as you might have heard, I've, I've got a wife, I've got kids, and I've, you know, I've got things that i got responsibility for. But I personally make about $100 million a week uh, salvaging, give or take, and that's, that's low-key. So that's salvaging on a very casual basis. There are some guys that make as little as $10 million ISK, a week, you know, and that, that's basically running one one contract. There are guys within Pro Synergy that are making, and I'm not kidding you, over a billion isk per week. Um, that's an obelisk, in a, almost an obelisk a week. That's pretty awesome. Um, so, you can do pretty well. When you think about it, you're taking out a contract. For example, if you look at my cargo hold right now, this is a small mission. I'm at 5 million isk. Estimated value. That's very small. I'm not finished, of course, but this guy was probably running L2s or L3s or something like that level mission so it's not going to be great um, not tech 2 ships but if you are running though sometimes I've come back with 32 32 million in the hold the amount of this you want to make depends on how much yeah exactly it depends on how determined you are but how pro synergy works you can go out and you could salvage for yourself and you can try and ninja salvage is what we're called or get yourself hooked up that's the best way with with mission runners uh, start a corporation get a can going and and advertise and run the missions for them but you're gonna have to cut them in right otherwise a lot of them are not gonna give you their their contracts 
So what we do with Pro Synergy, and I didn't have anything to do with setting this up. I'm just a I'm just a grunt blue collar worker with them. <clears throat> is you uh, you run your missions as a mission runner, and you're likely going to leave your stuff behind because you're not carrying a salvage array. You're probably not carrying a tractor beam. Um, uh, and then basically, what you want to do is uh, they're going to contract these. I'll get to that question in a second. Uh, they're going to contract these things to Pro Synergy. So every time they get to a place where they're shooting ships, that's called a window of bookmark in space. They're going to bookmark it, each and every one of them, and then they're going to come back and they're going to contract with Pro Synergy. A Pro Synergy salvager will pick it up, go out, do all the salvaging, exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm working for a mission runner called Serlita. Uh, when I get back, I will dump the entire contents of all the salvage into a canister. They will get paid, I believe, 50%. I will get 40% of that loot and Pro Synergy as a corporation gets 10%, which really isn't all that much considering they're the ones paying for the offices, and some of these offices are, you know, a million to 300 million a, a week. So that's quite a bit. So it's all really well maintained on a spreadsheet. Uh, you can make some pretty good coin. Now, got a question about, uh, like to do some ninja salvaging. How do I find them? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give that one to Marcus. Well, it depends what type of ninja salvaging you're talking about. I mean, you can <clears throat> you can scan down wrecks um, in Empire or in Low Sec or Null. Um, typically, what I like to do if I'm going to do some some you know high yield ninja salvaging, you get a small um, covert ops type vessel, a cloaky ship, something that can warp cloaked. So we're talking you know one of these new uh, Stratioses or uh, Asteros or whatever, or you know a, a co-ops or a stealth bomber even. And uh, sneak around in low sec and in null sec, where you know there have been a lot of battles. Um, typically, uh, if you're going to be doing you know high quality ninja salvaging, what you want to do is watch out for uh, battles that have occurred on gates and areas around head JP and catch and areas around like that, and in Providence, and uh, just kind of get to know the area, uh, get yourself some perches and some safe spots set up. Otherwise, you'll get killed really rapidly. You have to avoid bubbles. But uh, I've done really well sneaking into areas like that, uh, doing some salvaging of, of actual PvP wrecks and uh, pulling uh, modules before they send somebody in to clean up after a battle has occurred. Uh, where you can really do well is if you get there close after the battle has just happened and uh, quickly scoop people's stuff. I uh, wouldn't do that with a corporation with it with a tune though that is in a corporation. No, no, people no. People get pretty mad at you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's you know that's something with Pro Synergy. If you're caught ninja salvaging, basically uh, you are out, right? <laughs> because that uh, that can't happen. Um, but yeah, now what? Now if you're wanting to ninja salvage in low sec, obviously that's gonna pay. That's gonna pay bigger dividends. If you're trying to ninja salvage an empire though, what do you think about that? Well, I mean, your best bet for that is going to be going out through the trade routes. Um, go up to Jita and travel around Jita and the main trade routes between Jita and Heck, uh, Jita and um, uh, I guess now what's I forget the Glanty one. Jita and Amar down and through there. I've done really well going up in through there sometimes, just with a, a fast light ship with a couple of salvagers. Is what what you're getting there are people who are doing suicide ganks. Yeah. And if you're quick enough, you can scoop some pretty sweet stuff. At times, in between the time that they get somebody in there to scoop the stuff and the time that they've been killed by Concord, so that's uh, yeah. that's an option. And that's what they were saying. That's what he's saying. He's like, yeah, he's laughing. Hey guys, oh that's epic tank. Uh, he's uh, he's saying he's in a high sec guild. So I mean, killed. <laughs> Pardon me, high sec corp. So he wouldn't even attempt it. And you know what, man? You're not the only one. I. Uh, you know, I've actually had not much training from Marcus here, but a little bit about getting through jump gates and setting up safe points and perches and stuff like that. A little bit. And even I go to the gate and I just stand there and look. The other day you were a non-Marcus and I was at a gate and I was trying to run down to Shmiel. And I must have sat at that gate for 45 minutes before I finally chickened out and tucked tail back to the base. <laughs> I wasn't going to jump through that thing, man. So if you want to do ninja salvaging in high sec, well, you're looking, it's, it's a little bit different. Because, you know, they have the bookmarks for the mission. You don't have the bookmarks as to where they're hanging out. Uh, so all you really can do is um, a good way to do it is to jump to anomalies. You'll notice on your heads-up display here that I'm that I'm pointing at with my mouse right now. Uh, you'll see these red and, and yellow and green icons, when, and blue. And one now that I've got my sensor overlay up, you'll see that some of them are personal corporate agents, signatures, landmarks, and anomalies. You can, and I'm going to say this with a word of caution, jump to these anomalies as a salvager there could be people there and they could be taking they could maybe take a shot at you or at least uh, there could be uh, rats there 
which are, of course, P NPCs that could be taking a shot at you. But sometimes what you'll get is uh, leftover rats, and you can you can salvage those. But your better bet is, like he said, jumping around in, in some of the areas where you know people are running missions. Like, uh, I'm not going to say the one I'm in, but uh, <laughs> and, and try and you jump. You can use a probe scanner too. To yeah. Scan down the wrecks. Okay, um, I'll explain that then to him. Well, basically, you know, in the game, there's the game mechanic where you launch uh, uh, scan probes. So you can actually you can pick up the wrecks on D scan, and then you can actually scan down the location of where the wrecks are in deep space if you're using um, mm. some scan probes. So it's it's worth it's worth looking at. Some people do that. Um, I I haven't had a lot of success with it to be honest. Like finding the wrecks on D scan, I find is tough. You do have to do a bunch of jumping around to different locations before you'll pick something up. It's been my opinion anyway. Yeah, if you're going to get into scan probing and you're really good at it, you might as well start running, you know, some of the anomalies or different, different other types of PVE content. You'll make a lot more money per hour. Um, one place where you could theoretically ninja scan, uh, ninja ninja salvage is some people run these uh, empire anomalies or even low sec anomalies, and uh, periodically a, a faction rat will spawn. And I've seen people sit there in a cloaked ship waiting for them to shoot down the, the uh, faction rat or waiting for the faction rat to spawn. And then what you do is you rapidly decloak and you kill the faction rat yourself or just steal whatever's in it. If they're Because a lot of time people range tank those things. Um, <laughs> that can be um, lucrative because when the faction rat <laughs> spawns and it's killed, it can drop faction uh, loot, which is um, high value stuff. That's awesome. He says he scanned a wormhole down last night. Was totally scared. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, would you ever consider doing this for contract in in low sec for belt? Pardon me, I have to read that. Would you guys ever consider doing this for contract in low sec for for belt ratters? Um, uh, maybe, maybe I, with a catalyst. Um, yeah, I wouldn't. You would want to take a, a full blown. Uh, expensive ship into low sec, you're just going to get killed. It's yeah. The matter. The other problem with a contract in low sec is you'd always have the suspicion that whoever had contracted you to go out and start salvaging for them was in fact going to shoot you. Exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. Anything in low sec, if some guy's giving me a contract in low sec to go clean out belt ratters, well, first of all, that's usually not, I mean, it's not enough of volume unless you're in an asteroid belt and you've been there potting these guys for some time and. I, what are you getting? Four ships a wave? Eight ships a wave? I get into some of these rooms for these mission runners, and I'm getting 30, 40, 50 ships in a room. So that's where the money's at. So, But yeah, I would instantly turn that down because I would say, no, you're going to kill me as soon as I get there because you contracted it. Now you know where I am. <laughs> There's some safety in high sec. a different story, of course. You know, With a wormhole, there are ways to, you know, to operate in a wormhole. It's similar to operating in null sec. Uh, the, the, the rewards are much higher. Uh, like um, Eisenfer had mentioned, he'd scan down a C4 or a C5. There's really good mining opportunities in those um, in those types of wormholes as well, which sometimes you know can be worth it. Um, going in with uh, you know some sort of a heavy-duty hauler ship. We used to do that. We used to take orcas into wormholes, set up a small pause temporarily, mine out the system. Um, and then jump back into the orca, find a wormhole, uh, an empire exit, and 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 and, and scoot back out again. You know, it, but uh, everything has risk. There's, you gotta you gotta balance your risk versus reward. Yeah, that's a good question that uh, Essenfer just posted. He asked if I use an MTU. I normally do. Uh, that's something I was just discussing uh, discussing discussing a little while ago. Is that I am actually on my alt right now. Uh, what we do, as you know, if you're doing any salvaging, that uh, if you're in a corporation, your corporation can very well get get uh, war declared on them and so if that's the case I can't leave the station so what we do is we keep an in-corp character and he's the one who will pick up the contracts while your out-of-corp character get you contract them to him so you can take off and you can uh, you can run your missions even when you're war decked and you can get your salvage going and pay your clients the thing is that I moved my main alt down to uh, Palace so there's L4 missions being run out of there in Amar all the time but I didn't want to finish salvaging in uh, Langisi where I am, so I just started training this guy up. So I don't have my drones trained yet, and I probably could use an MTU, I just didn't bother to buy one. But I do, I use an MTU and four drones. Or five drones, I think. MTU is it, pretty efficient. My alliance, rats in low, uh, my alliance rats in low as an income for ISK uh, to do PvP, and he makes 100 to 200 million an hour. Oh yeah, if you're living in uh, if you're living in null sec or low sec and you're 
you know you have a, a system where you can operate out there you definitely will make a lot more risk i, I used to do that too we used to run uh, 10 templexes out in uh, pure blind and you know just about every one you ran you were getting a, a faction battleship uh, blueprint you know it's, it's that's crazy. insane uh, we made billions and billions of isk um, wow. another thing we used to do is uh, heavy low sec, uh, heavy null sec industry uh, Red Sun Industries used to run all the industry for an alliance called Fatal Ascension. Uh, basically, we did all their logistics and we built their capital fleet. This is a few years ago. But we used to knock off a, a new dreadnought, you know, basically enough minerals to build a new dreadnought every probably week or two weeks with our industrial group. We were building capital ships like they were going out of style. Of course, at the time, they kind of were going out of style. Uh, <laughs> we were losing a lot of them, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah, that that's exactly why we did that essence first. Yeah, because uh, you know you you're coming out of the base with a pro synergy tag on you and uh, your war declared, but you know as soon as I switch to my alt, they have no idea who I am and I'm leaving. I fly right past them. I get my mission done. And to your question, MTT, I would consider coming down on contract and doing that for you, but I would require uh, a couple of things. Probably I would require an escort. <laughs> And I'll, I'll cut you in on the salvage, but I, if you're down there and you guys have got the guns and the muscle, then I'll, I'll come with an escort. Uh, That's a pretty good deal, actually. If you had a group that was, you know, interested in bringing in an industrial group, that's... You know that's pretty common actually. We're seeing yep. uh, a larger alliance or a larger group that's living in a certain region. If they have it relatively secured, then they're now safe to bring in somebody to exploit the resources. And then there's some sort of a equitable di equitable distribution of the wealth that can occur. I think that's kind of what you were describing that Fate was doing earlier. There that's exactly it. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. So they were, you know, they were providing the muscle and the safety, and uh, and then of course these miners were paying them handsomely, but it was still worth it for them. Um, to do that, so I would require that. Plus, I would also—I don't think I would require a um, any sort of collateral for that. But if you know, obviously, I get I get killed one time, we're done. <laughs> you know, that's and if it's by you guys, that is, of course. Um, yeah, I know. He's asking if you still build capital ships. Uh, we haven't built them in a, in a couple of years now, actually. Um, um, we uh, pulled out of Fatal Ascension at one point. We got a lot of drama. Um, this is common in, in these larger alliances, and uh, we've you know we've been in a lot of different groups. Um, right now, we're just kind of focusing more on uh, you know low, uh, small scale PvP and a little bit of Vampire Industry. Um, we do a little bit of dabbling in low sec and wormholes. Um, so we're not really doing it right now. We still have all the tools and equipment to to, to build uh, capital ships. Um, for instance, you know, you need a lot of blueprints. Uh, we have all the blueprint originals for quite a few of the more popular capital vessels, but um, but uh, we, we haven't really gotten into full-scale industry like that in, in quite a while. Uh, Redson Industries at one time had like 150 members. You know, all of them were, you know, high-end indus industrial uh, tunes. So, uh, you know, we could clear out an entire null sex system uh, with hulks in, in a matter of, of hours. And... Uh, yeah, we're we're not we're not on that level of that scale anymore. We're a little bored with it actually. Mining is one of those things, you know, it's very lucrative, but it's also really stupid, you know. It's, it's <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, I posted my uh, my gaming email down there for you guys. If you do have anything particularly Ouch. That hurts. Oh, sorry guys. <laughs> That's okay. If you do have anything particularly in EVE that you want to see, um, then go ahead and shoot me off an email to that when we are streaming. So if you want to see some PvP content, you want to see just some PvE L4 missions, you want to see ship fittings, um, whatever. If you want us to cover certain things on the show, Marcus, you know, he's pretty good about this kind of stuff. He knows a lot of the stuff. We're also connected with another co uh, corporation called RSI. These guys are all longtime players with some of the largest corporations in, in the game. So um, they can feed us with a ton of information. So if you do want to see anything, you have any questions you can go ahead and email to that and we'll try and hook them up in the next stream um, or if you want to see some pvp battles maybe even some spec ops cloak hot dropping um, yeah we might even get into doing some of that for you uh, and risk our lives <laughs> and ships for your entertainment so that'd be pretty cool should be um, should be interesting. Yeah, <laughs> so you guys can do that. We're gonna try and stream at the same time each week, which is uh, I'm, we're not signing off right now, so don't worry. But Wednesday at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern time. So um, yeah, hit us up. And uh, for those of you who just entered the channel, thanks for coming, thanks for streaming, thanks for watching. We really appreciate all the follows, and we really appreciate all you guys in channel 
talking it up with us. That's what makes streaming fun. We'll check out your streams if you post them. Um, so, yeah, thanks a lot. We do have uh, uh, Marcus and a couple other guys in channel here. Wild Tony, if he hasn't left yet. Uh, some of these guys that are here today have been playing for a long time. So if you have any questions, uh, fire away. In the meantime, I'm going to go back to Langisi and pick up another salvage mission. And maybe an MTU. So if you want to see how an MTU works, I will go back and pick up an MTU. Hmm. I'm going to see where my drone skills are at, too. Uh, oh, yeah. Essen for wants to know, I'm looking to expand Alliance. Best way to do so? Wow, okay. So you're looking to, re to recruit corporations for your in-game alliance, Essenfer? Is that, is that correct? I'll just wait for that to catch up. I've been in your situation. Uh, tough, tough thing to do. Um, well, one of the things in Eve that I've always kind of remarked upon yep. is how he it's says that's correct. That's what he's looking oh, okay. to do. Yeah. Okay, good. One of the things in Eve that's really interesting is it, it kind of Eve kind of suffers from a too many chiefs, not enough Indians kind of uh, scenario all the time. Sorry, I'm, I'm part native, so I can get away with saying that. Sorry, not, no offense to anybody. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, yeah, but, politics uh, and live streaming <laughs> is nothing uh, is nothing <laughs> sacred. Eh? <laughs> Anyways, what it is basically everybody's trying to start their own corporation and, and, and building up alliances and trying to do it from scratch. It's really challenging. I, I really feel for you. Uh, we, we've we've played that game too. Um, I guess the most critical thing maybe is to just kind of try to make yourself famous. I mean, live stream, uh, do videos, um, get a good website, um, start generating content, and, and you'll attract people. That's that's my best advice for you in terms of trying to recruit. I've done it the hard way, you know, gone out and just tried to, you know, one by one bring people in. And you can do well that way, but also you can bring in a lot of scammers and griefers and problems that way as well, and a lot of drama long term. So... Uh, <laughs> it's a it's a challenging uh, it's a challenging thing to to recruit. No question, it's, it's a tough thing. What we do now, of course, with RSI, we're all bitter vets. So, you know, we basically we, we know a lot of people. Um, we've all been flying together for years. Um, when there are people that I know personally who start to play Eve, I typically try to bring them into my my circle and uh, try to help them out. Other than that, I don't bother recruiting. <laughs> you know, it's a it's a tough go. But hey, you know, look us up. Um, Join the channel of the Warp on In, or, or uh, look me up, Marcus Stradlin, in game, uh, and uh, you never know. We'll, we'll we'll chat with you. Whatever you guys are doing, we'll fly with you. Maybe um, we're down for for whatever people are doing, and uh, if you want to fly with us, all good. We're one of those groups that you know is always interested in. And, and jumping in and, and helping out and doing fun stuff. Um, another group, uh, there's a couple different groups that you could uh, look at for um, for ideas. Um, if you're looking to move into NullSec, I definitely recommend checking out Providence, going out to CVA space or Volta space and uh, and learning NullSec out there. You'll meet up with other people who are doing the same thing and, and uh, you may collate together and form something big. That's what happened with Fatal Ascension. Um, Otherwise, uh, you know, uh, maybe Bombers Bar. I don't know if you've heard of Bombers Bar. They're a group of people who basically do this NPSI, so not purple shoot it. There's no politics. There's no drama. It's just basically a fleet of crazy people and stealth bombers shooting everything that moves that's not in the fleet. <laughs> it's a hoot. <laughs> it's definitely worth trying out. Um, you know, so there's other groups like that, that you could you could check out. Um, it's a great way to, to meet other pilots, and uh, then over time, you know, you, you build up. They're talking about custom ships. Um can you build custom ships in Eve? What are your thoughts on that? But... Uh, well, there's a lot of ship customization in Eve. Definitely, um, there are hundreds of different ship types, and then literally thousands of different modules. So, um, you know, you definitely there's a high level of customization in Eve. Um, it's not that you're building a, a custom ship per se. Uh, in terms of the type, like you're not designing a new type. All the types are pretty much set, although new ships are released periodically. Um, but one type of ship could be very adaptable, particularly the strategic cruisers, the T3s. So there's a number of different options. So depending on how you've set it up, it'll have a very you know, radically different function and capability. So that, that's really the art of EVE. Uh, kind of the deep stuff of EVE is understanding you know, the whys and wherefores of how different setups 
are done, you know, and why people do, uh, you know, why somebody, this ship survives this situation and this ship doesn't, you know, kind of thing. But, uh, it's That's the thing that I find fascinating with EVE is really studying how people have adapted their ships for the game mechanics. There's a lot to that. Yeah, um, yeah. SM4 basically agreed with you. He's saying, you know, Tengus and stuff like that are builder ships. You know, they be at T3s, they're a little bit adaptable. Now, you guys notice I just finished up this contract here. So I didn't. We're talking, we're chatting. If I was actually with my my alt or not my alt, my main, and I would have my MTUs and my drones and all those kind of things, uh, and not t chatting and watching a live stream and stuff like that, we can. Uh, oh, can you? Sorry, I think it is. It's in. The warp on in is in I-N-N, -N, right? That's right, yeah. The warp on in, I double N. Yeah. Yep. Um, so uh, I would normally whip through something in half that time. So that those particular runs were worth 16 points. So 16 million in estimated value of ISK. So that 16 million, you know, your mission run is going to get uh, either 8 or 6 to 8, I think 40 to 50%. So I'm, I'm probably going to pull 7 or 8 million off of that. So that's not bad. So... In actuality, that should have taken me about six or seven minutes, ten tops, if I wasn't, you know, live streaming and talking and chatting and having a good time. Um, have you flown a Confessor? Uh, the new Confessor class? No, I haven't. I haven't purchased one yet. But um, I did just win second prize in the uh, Pod and Planet Eve fan fiction contest. And the second prize was 2.5 billion isk, and so as soon as I received that uh, <laughs> prize, <laughs> my plan is to... Uh, to definitely uh, go ahead and buy one of those puppies. They look pretty cool. So Essenfer was trying to join the warp on in. I think he wanted to chat it up with you guys. He says he needs he requires an invite. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's um, I'm just changing the settings on that. Um, default access had been set temporarily to blocked. So just set that to allowed. So uh, just try it again, Essenfer. He says he has a 26 kilometer confessor. Oh, really? Yeah, wow. they're fast, I guess. 26 kilometers per second. Yeah, per second. 26,000 meters per second. <laughs> that's pretty. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's fast. That's that's a lot of fun. Is that just I look, I look built for slipping in and out of low sec? Uh, it's it's basically it's a we've had T3 strategic cruisers for a long time, Phoenix, but now they've brought in these uh, T3 strategic destroyers, and uh, it's just one type. It's the Amar type, mm -hmm. and. Um, it's kind of cool. It's uh, it's uh, it's got three main functioning modes. It's got a sort of an attack mode, sort of a, of a, of a fast escape mode, and uh, I forget what the third mode is. But anyway, so depending on how you've set your ship up, it'll do different things. And it's based on in the game lore. It's based on the same uh, advanced sleeper technology that the T3 cruisers are, are based on, supposedly. That is pretty awesome. That's pretty wild. Oh, I want to see one of those now. Have they got them in game here yet? Well, I encountered one the other day in a wormhole. So um, let's check it out, man. <laughs> in a wormhole, and, uh, yeah. Did you take a shot at it? He was uh, he was ratting in a shattered uh, system wormhole, and uh, and uh, I got him on D scan, and uh, he didn't see me because I was in a helios and I was cloaked. But I was like, ah, cool, confessor, very neat. I'm not sure exactly what he was doing. Um, at the time, I was just trying to find a way to get out of wormhole for some friends who were trapped in a wormhole in some battleships. Whoops. Well, there it is there. Um, <laughs> description. Your first du duty is to purge yourself in the flames of your confession before God. You must become ash in God's hands. <laughs> okay. For only then may you rise anew to strike the adversary down. So what kind of ship is that? What, what uh, race? Sorry, I'm in a command center, and uh, the... The, the comm room is screaming in the background. I had to mute. So oh, get blasted. <laughs> no worries. Um, somebody's getting dispatched right now. There must be a fire or something. I, I'm working right now in an emergency operations center. Um, well, yeah, it doesn't. After work, I'm just sitting here. Um, the Confessor is an Amarian style ship. So the Amarians are the ones who are like the super religious kind of people in Eve. So there's four main factions, and uh, so this is the one that's been released. Oops, sorry, I'm going to mute again. Here we go. So I've got a bigger pick now, so we get an idea what this ship looks like. You guys can have a have a look at what I'm actually going to just go almost full screen with this thing here. Uh, Confessor. There you go. Oh, wow. That's a sleek looking ride. <laughs> bumped a freighter nine kilometers off gate with one bump. That's crazy. Oh, this thing moves, eh? It folds and changes. Okay, I'm back. Are you watching the yeah. stream at all? 
as yeah i'm just back now <clears throat> as you um as you change to your different modes the actual the ship's appearance changes uh kind of cool that is really neat we're getting close to this thing here huh yeah very cool ship uh, and there will be new ones uh, being launched as well. The one for the Mimitar, the Glenty, and the uh, Kaldari will be released over the next few months, uh, I understand. Well, this thing looks like it's built for speed, too. Yeah, well, I can't believe, man. 26,000 uh, kilometers, uh, meters per second. That's that's pretty fast. Uh, I wonder how the NTT... Oh, yeah, it's bumping. <laughs> yeah, he said it bumps them a 9K <laughs> off a gate. It'd be very good for bumping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. Well, it's got to have at least a 12 cylinder in it, eh? See, it must be uh, like a 12 cylinder. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing the MTT's um, um, confessor must be sort of faction fit or whatever in order to get that kind of speed. I think I could take it with my Pontiac Montana. Yeah, that's a that's a nice that's a nice looking ship. That is. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Oh, pretty that, sweet. that's so true. As in first says, it reminds him of the gun from the Fifth Element. It is exactly what it reminds me of, actually. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it is like that. That is pretty cool. Yeah, cool ship. Yeah, no kidding. Probably pretty pricey. I think they're what are the maybe MTT can fill us in on that, but I think they're running at about what four hundred mil right now or something like that. Uh, no, actually, not too bad. Eighty-two mil. Oh yeah, that would be the base uh, hull, but then you'd be buying, I believe, um, some some additional modules on top of that. Um, <laughs> he says, "I would bump your Pontiac into Jita from there." <laughs> would you please? Would you do that? I hate that ride, man. Oh man, I used to have a Camaro. I had a Mustang, and then you could start to see the fall from grace, right? Because you know, you get yourself into a Grand Prix. You think, "Oh, it's a family car," but it's still kind of a sports car, right? It's a Grand Prix. No, no, no. That was the beginning of the end. It was a Grand Prix to Grand Am to, and I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this on live stream. Pontiac Sunfire. Okay, now I'm gonna Ooh. cover. Now I'm gonna cover my face because I'm so embarrassed by that. And then, and then, oh man, it just went down. I mean, there was a show, an SHO, a Taurus tucked in there somewhere, and that wasn't too bad. Uh, but uh, there was even a few four temples. And anyway, long story short, I'm in a Pontiac Montana, and I just like hate it. Hate it. Two thousand nine. Well, you know, uh, what? Functionally fa functional family vehicle. I couldn't yeah. do the van thing. I've, I've been getting SUVs, so I, I just picked up a, a Mercedes GL, which I kind of like, but um, a little high on the maintenance is the problem. So. So he's anyway. he said he's finding uh, he's finding one of these confessors for sixty seven mil. I'm looking at it. I'm in uh, looking heck. Looks like eighty two mil. What? Oh no, kidding. Yeah. So so basically, is is that like the T three where you have to buy the the basic hull and then buy additional uh, modules to fit it out, or is it just is it just the hull cost? Hmm. Uh, I have no idea. I, I'm, this is completely new to me. I'm just asking the people on the on the street. <clears throat> well, if I've got a ship up here, would it show me? Would it tell me there? He's in Amar, and that's where he's paying sixty seven. Seven mil in Amar. I'm gonna go up there and pick one up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just looking at the requirements. Uh, it's not even that bad, you know. A spaceship command one, a Mar frigate three, a Mar destroyer five, and a Mar tac one, tactical yeah, destroyer bad. one. That's I, I can fly that no problem right now. I could fly that in twelve days because <laughs> I don't have it. I haven't trained up for anything uh, for a Mar, and it is apparently. Well, okay, we got a disagreement. As the first says, whole cost. My soup says it's the whole cost. Okay. So we're gonna have to get to the bottom of that well, one. Yeah, it's um, it may be confusing too because you'd have the hull cost, but then you'd have your modules. But it, with a T3 ship, you buy the basic hull, and then you have to buy. Oh. You can choose from a number of other modules in order to customize it. And I oh, thought the dude. professor was that way as well. MTT says he bought his very early on for 700 mil unfit. Oh, ouch! ouch. <laughs> can I get a reset button on that one, please? <laughs> oh, that so hurts. I'm showing it for. Um, out our way here for a lot more expensive than that, but I'll have to run up to Amar and check it out. Yeah, sweet ship. <laughs> this is awesome. Okay, so then, so he said whole cost. My soup said hull cost, and then as a first said no, sorry, my bad, hull cost, and then my soup said no, sorry, I'm saying what he's saying. <laughs> okay. So you guys just flipped roles. <laughs> All right. So which one is it, hull cost or whole cost? <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, well, I'm willing to bet. Um, I'm willing to bet the MTT for the fit that he's talking about, where he's you know doing that kind of speed. I'm pretty sure uh, he's talking a faction fit. So you'd buy the hull, but then you'd start putting like T2 rigs on there, um, and then some faction modules. You're probably you know quadrupling or even more the cost of the base hull with your with your modules. Oh, okay. He's saying he's agreeing with you, not Essenfer. <laughs> he's just spelled it wrong. He's 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 saying what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. okay now it's all it's all coming clear. <laughs> Oh, look at these contracts. Here's the other thing with Pro Synergy, what they don't let me do, is I can't pick and choose my contracts. So if you're, when I'm looking at the contracts page that just came up for you, Tiberius Wolf, he's a pretty good runner, but you know I know that if I was to run the Rocky Kangaroo job, because I know that guy, um, or not that one, pardon me. Uh, yeah, well, he's not, he, he, normally he's running all four, so that would be, that's probably a 30-pointer, probably, usually for him. But I always have to take the oldest one first, so they expire, because they expire in two. Five bookmarks. I don't really want to take a five bookmarker right now. No homo foam? <laughs> I must have missed something. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, you know what? I don't think I want to take another salvaging contract right now. <laughs> no homo foam. <laughs> no homo foam. <laughs> <laughs> no homo. Yeah, where, where are you running your L4s? That's in for... We run a fair few it L4s does sound in Palace and, and uh, South of Mars. So we're operating down here in, in uh, sort of the uh, the outside regions of uh, you know uh, <clears throat> lower lower security uh, Conid and Amarian space. Hmm. Lone Trek. Where's Lone Trek? Oh well, guys, I, I apparently have missed an appointment. I got to run, but it's been awesome, and we'll we'll, well, we'll definitely jump in and stream again. Actually, what we're gonna do is we're gonna close down. We're gonna shut the stream. I normally only stream for about an hour and a half. It's been a little bit past that. So we want to thank all you guys for coming out, all of you for watching. Twenty-eight viewers. That is fantastic. Check us out next Wednesday. If you keep watching the stream, we might even add a, a second night, uh, maybe in an evening. And uh, email me, hit me up. And we'll uh, add what you need in the stream, what you want to see. So thanks a lot, guys, for following. We love all you guys, and uh, we're signing off.